Good morning, grade sixes. Another beautiful day. The birds are chirping and the dogs are barking. Welcome to Worksheet Cloud, grade sixes, natural sciences. If you have a question during the lesson, send an email with your question to grade six at worksheetcloud.com and I will do my best to answer you. Today's lesson is on solids, liquids and gases. My name is Mrs. Hall and I look forward to teaching you this lesson. By the end of this lesson, you will know the following. What a material is. What we mean by property. What the properties of solids, liquids and gases are. Materials. Everything is made from some sort of material. Look around you right now. The chair you're sitting on, the desk you're at, the computer that you may be watching this lesson from. It is made from some sort of material. Materials are made up of lots and lots of tiny pieces. These tiny pieces are known as particles. Solids, liquids and gases are all made of lots of particles. Properties. The property of a material tells us something about what it is like. A physical property is any property that can be observed using the five senses, like sight, smell, touch, or can be measured without changing the matter. Common physical properties include mass, volume, weight, color, size, and texture. Scientists rely on physical properties as their starting point for learning about and describing matter. Let's take a look at a few definitions of, a of physical properties of matter. Boiling point definition. Boiling point is the temperature at which a liquid boils and turns to vapor. Melting point, the definition is the temperature at which a given solid will melt, like a block of ice. Texture definition, the feel or the appearance or consistency of a surface or a substance. Color definition, the property possessed by an object of producing different sensations on the eye as a result of the way the object reflects or emits light. An odor definition, we all know this one, it's a distinctive smell. Now, today we're going to look at density in quite a lot of detail as we look at the makeup or the particle makeup of a solid, a liquid and a gas. So the density definition is a physical property of matter that relates to both the mass and the volume. So how tightly packed the matter is, is the amount of mass in a given space. So we are going to look at solids, which are very dense, and compare it to liquids and gases, which are a lot less dense. Let's get started. The arrangement of particles of matter in solids, liquids, and gases. As you know, matter is anything that has weight and takes up space. A particle is the smallest possible unit of matter. Understanding that matter is made up of tiny particles too small to be seen can help us understand the behavior and properties of matter. Everything that you can see and touch is made up of matter. It is all the stuff in the universe, and boy, do we have a lot of stuff. Things that are not made up of matter include energy and ideas like peace 
and love and faith and joy and hope. And one of my favorites, kindness. So as you know, and I've told you, solids contain particles that are tightly packed with very little spaces between the particles. Solids stay in one place and can be held physically in your hands. Solids keep their shape. They do not flow like a liquid. Solids always take up the same amount of space. They do not spread out like gases. Solids can be cut or shaped. Even though they can be pulled, sugar, salt and flour are all solids. Each particle of salt, for example, keeps the same shape and the same volume. Liquids contain particles that are more loosely packed than solids, but still closely packed compared to gases. Liquids can flow or be poured easily. They are not easy to hold. Liquids change their shape depending on the container they are in. For example, you might have liquid in a bottle. It takes on the shape of the bottle. You might put the same liquid into a bowl and that liquid will then take on the shape of the bowl that it is in. Even when liquids change their shape, they always take up the same amount of space. Their volume stays the same. Particles are even more spread apart in gases. Gases are often invisible. Gases do not keep their shape or always take up the same amount of space. They spread out and change their shape and volume to fill up whatever container they are in. So they might be in a gas bottle, they might be in a room. Gases will fill any container, but if they are not in a container, they will escape into the air. Now, as you know, a lot of space exists between the particles in a gas, allowing gases to be compressed. Now, if you compress something, you push them back together. This can be done much more easily than solids and liquids. And that's what they do in a gas bottle. They compress the gas into that gas bottle. And as it releases, it gives us energy. Now, Particles are moving all the time. There are spaces between the particles of matter in a solid and a liquid and a gas. The particles move faster when we add heat to them. In solids, they are closely packed, so they move very slowly or we say they vibrate. In liquids, they are further apart, so they can move a little bit faster. And in gases, the particles are very far apart, so they move a lot faster. Let's take a look at the scientific diagram showing the arrangement of particles. Here's our solid, very tightly packed together, no space between them. They are able to move very slowly. We cannot see them moving or they vibrate. In a liquid, slightly further apart so there is space for them to now move around each other and because they are moving they are flowing around each other and move a little bit faster than what a solid does. A gas on the other hand the particles are much further apart and there's a lot of space between them and that's why I said earlier they can be compressed and pushed back together. Okay, so they are moving randomly in all directions and they move very fast. Matter can change states. Let's add heat and take a look at what happens. Right, here we have a solid and if we add heat 
to a solid, it goes through the process of melting and changes to a liquid. If we add heat to this liquid, it goes through the process of boiling and changes to a gas. Exactly the same happens in the opposite direction, the reverse process. In a gas, as you can see over here, we're now going to cool it. And through the process of condensation, the gas is going to change form back to a liquid. If we then cool the liquid, it will go through the process of freezing and change to a solid. Let's take a look at it in a little bit more detail, and hopefully you'll understand this after the next few slides. Now, how does this happen? How does the change of state happen? Right, look at our diagram. We have our solid here, our liquid here, and our gas here. Right. If particles are in a solid and they are heated up, they gain kinetic energy. Now, kinetic energy is energy of movement, and they move slightly apart. So, a reminder, solid, heating it up through the process, which will then be melting, the particles change state and become a liquid because they move more slightly apart. Now, if the particles in the liquid are heated up, they gain even more kinetic energy, energy of movement, and move even further apart through the process of evaporating and become a gas. Now let's take a look at it in the reverse process. How does this happen? So here we start with a gas, and the particles in the gas, once they are cooled, they have less kinetic energy, less energy of movement, and start to move closer together and form a liquid. If the particles in the liquid are cooled, they have even less kinetic energy, energy of movement, and move even closer together to form a solid again. Let's take a look at an example of water, which we all know. Water can be a solid, a liquid, or a gas. When it is very cold, it is a solid, ice. When it is at room temperature, it is a liquid, water. And when it is hot, it is a gas, steam. I hope that all makes a lot more sense to you now, and you understand how the particles move in order for a change of state. Now, let's have a little quiz. Sit up straight, who was listening, who was focused, or who was snacking too much and staring out the window? Right, let's go. Which of these is not a gas? A, steam from a kettle, B, air, or C, the sea? Which of them is not a gas? You can shout it out at me. I cannot hear you. Sometimes that's a good thing. It's amazing how much information we can get through when there's no interruptions, grade sixes. Right, the answer is C, the C. Is a balloon full of air or an empty balloon heavier? Now, I want you to think about this very carefully. A, a balloon full of air is heavier, B, an empty balloon is heavier, or C, they are both the same. I'm going to give you a second to think about this, grade sixes. Is a balloon full of air or an empty balloon heavier? Right, if you shouted out your answer at me, it is A. Who got it right? A balloon full of air is slightly heavier girls and boys, because air takes up space. It has a mass. So the air in the balloon is taking up space in the balloon and it has a mass. So a balloon full of air will definitely be heavier. Not by much though, but you can definitely see it. Go and do a little bit of research on the internet and even try this experiment at home if you want, if you have a balloon. 
What are the bubbles when you squeeze a cloth underwater? Is it A, water, B, air coming from spaces in the cloth, or C, fibers from the cloth? It is B, air coming from spaces in the cloth. Right, which material is a liquid? Is it A, salt, B, body wash, or C, helium? Which material is a liquid? B, body wash. Well done to those who got it. Which material is a solid? A, a sponge, B, syrup, C, shampoo. A, a sponge. Well done. How do you change a solid metal to a liquid? A, you heat it. B, you cool it. Or C, you do absolutely nothing. A, you heat it. To change a solid metal to a liquid, you heat it. Which of these is not a solid? A, honey, B, sand, C, sugar. Which of them is not a solid? Shouting out your answers. Correct, A, honey is not a solid. My particles are packed tightly together. I have a fixed shape. What am I? Uh, am I A, a solid, B, a liquid, or C, a gas? Tightly packed together, fixed shape, what am I? Shout it out. Correct. A, a solid. My particles are loosely packed. I take the shape of a container. What am I? A, a solid, B, a liquid, C, a gas. Particles loosely packed, take the shape of the container. Correct? B, a liquid. Well done, grade sixes. You are doing so well. My particles are very far apart and I can move quickly in all directions. What am I? And remember, now they're moving, they're far apart. There's lots of space for them to randomly move in all directions. And what else? They can also be easily compressed. Is it A, a solid, B, a liquid, or C, a gas? Correct answer? It's a gas. C. Well done. Thanks for watching, Grade Sixes. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope you learned something new. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great day. And remember, be kind and help with the chores around the home. Grade Sixes, you are so welcome to take a look at the worksheets that are also on this website and do a little bit of extra revision and enrichment for yourselves. The memo as well as the worksheet is there. Good luck. Enjoy.